Hello again everyone, and I'm continuing to work my way through some of these new Nikon Z mount lenses here with the lovely Nikkor Z 24-70mm f2.8 S. It's only for Canon's new mirrorless Z mount camera system, and it costs £2,000 here in the UK and over $2,000 in the US. That is of course very expensive for a lens in this class. The Canon RF 24-70 f2.8 also costs about that amount, but at least it features its own image stabilization. This Nikon lens had better be something special. As I'm sure you all know already, a fast standard zoom lens is an absolutely staple option for any camera system. This one gives you a pretty standard zoom range of 24-70mm, not ambitious by any means, but at least 24mm is lovely and wide and the maximum aperture of f2.8 lets you get some decently fast shutter speed and nicely out of focus backgrounds. Nicely, not spectacularly. As I've hinted at already, this lens does not have its own image stabilization system, but the majority of Nikon's new Z-mount cameras has it built in anyway, so for many users that won't be a real issue. The build quality of this Nikon lens is spectacularly lovely. It's the photographic equivalent of taking an Aston Martin around your local country roads for an afternoon. It feels weighty in your hand, but not overly heavy at 800 grams, just under two pounds. It certainly looks the business, being big but not oversized, with a nice look and design to it. It's based on a metal lens mount with a weather sealing gasket too, and also some nice flocking just inside the electrical contacts to reduce flaring from reflections, a nice little touch. Then comes a customizable control ring. In your camera's menu, you can make it either change your aperture, your ISO setting, or your exposure compensation, or turn off its functions altogether. It feels like it's made of metal and it turns very smoothly. Next, we see a little LED display, which is always a nice gimmick. By pressing the display button, you can toggle it between showing your aperture, your focus point, or even your precise focal length as you're zooming in. Whether that's really useful to you or not is up to you, but it's kind of cool. Next comes the zoom ring. It's rubberized, which is nice, but it doesn't turn amazingly smoothly, being a little sticky at certain points. A slight disappointment there. And at the very top comes a metallic focus ring, which does turn smoothly. It's electronically coupled to the lens's focus motor, and it's not amazingly responsive in use, but it does get the job done. The lens suffers from a little focus breathing, zooming out a little as you focus more closely. The lens's autofocus motor is silent in use, and it works fantastically quickly and accurately, as you can see here. The lens's hood is made of plastic, but it's nicely flocked on the inside to reduce reflections. That's an increasingly rare little touch nowadays. Its filter thread size is an increasingly common 82mm wide. All in all, its design is incredibly neat and tidy, not to mention classy looking, and admittedly, in the hand, it feels a little bit more refined than Canon's equivalent RF lens. Now then, image quality. I'm testing this lens on a 45 megapixel Nikon Z7, the highest resolution Nikon Z camera available at the time of making this review. Image corrections are turned on, except for diffraction correction. Let's start at 24mm. In the middle of your image, at f2.8, sharpness and contrast are spectacular. Let's look over in the corners. They're a little softer, but actually, considering that we're shooting this on a full-frame 45 megapixel camera, they are highly impressive. Stop down to f4, f5.6, and f8 for gradual, tiny little improvements in sharpness and brightness there. If you stop down to f11 or f16, then the image begins to get softer again due to the physical effects of diffraction. Well, let's zoom in now to 40mm. It's exactly the same story, razor sharp in the middle of the image, straight from f2.8, and just a little softer in the corners, getting very slightly sharper as you stop down to f8. So again, a great performance. And finally, let's zoom all the way into 70mm. This time, at f2.8, sharpness is just mildly softer in the middle of the image than at wider angles, but still really impressive corner image quality is noticeably softer now, but still not bad at all, considering the very difficult sensor that we're working on. 
it's topped down to f4, and the corners see a little improvement in contrast, and the middle of the image sees brilliant sharpness once again. At f5.6, the most extreme pixel peepers in the world will see even a touch more sharpness in the middle, and the corners see a slight improvement too. It's topped down to f8, and those corners see excellent sharpness. So, overall, standard zoom lenses are difficult for manufacturers to design, and considering that we're working on such a demanding camera sensor, I think this Nikon lens is a pretty great performer. The only cause for any kind of real complaint is the image corners at 70mm, although in absolute terms they're still reasonably good, it's generally a very sharp lens that will bring a smile to the face of any professional photographer. I didn't bother testing it in APS-C mode because, well, you've seen the results in the middle of the image already, and I think APS-C users will be just as impressed. Ok, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting. Here are the results on full frame, with in-camera corrections turned off. At 24mm, we see particularly strong barrel distortion and very dark corners at f2.8. Those corners gradually get brighter at f4, f5.6 and f8, although they never truly see even brightness. Zoom in to 35mm and that distortion flips over into a pincushion pattern, which at 70mm gets very strong indeed. Vignetting is still quite a problem at f2.8 too, with the same gradual improvement at f4, f5.6 and f8. A disappointing show here, this is the second new Nikon Z mount zoom lens I've tested which has not been properly corrected for vignetting and distortion. Well, let's see about close-up image quality. The lens can focus down to about 38cm. Close-up image quality is slightly soft at f2.8 and a little sharper at f4 and f5.6, just an average performance here. Now let's see how the lens works against bright light, it's a great performance at wider angles here with very little flaring, zoom in and bright lights will carry a bit more of an effect though, still it's at wider angles that flaring tends to be a bigger concern. Now let's see about the quality of this lens's bokeh, f2.8 lenses can get you some pretty out of focus backgrounds, particularly at longer focal lengths, and this thing's backgrounds look reasonably smooth, although nothing to really write home about. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. It's quite minimal on this lens, straight from f2.8 you can see little in the way of colour fringing on bokeh highlights, and stop down to f4 to see it properly go away. Overall then, while I was out shooting with it, the lens mostly left me in a very happy place, although not completely. I fell in love with its design and build quality, it's a dream to handle, and its sharpness, colours and contrast are all pretty great. It was a real shame to see all that distortion and vignetting being hidden away by autocorrections, which are lossy for image quality, and its close-up image quality and bokeh didn't completely bowl me over either. Its very expensive price is hard to swallow too, especially considering that it doesn't have its own image stabilisation, but overall, this is a lens for professional uses like wedding photography or journalism where it will really shine. I'll say it again, it's overpriced, but considering its great performance and beautiful build quality, it does have to come highly recommended.